On this test fixture, the left-right switch isn't broken, but it's bent and it's annoying to use and it kind of feels like it's, it's about to give out anyway. And I needed a candidate for uh, re replacement in this video. You need to open up, remove all the screws. There's three screws and these are um, machine screws, or I'm sorry, uh, sheet metal screws as opposed to machine screws. Remove the plastic sides. Now remove five screws that hold the bottom cover on. Now the cover will come off. So, in order to get to the switch, you need to remove the two sides uh, that hold all the contacts assemblies. But to to get to this side, it's really it's easy. But to get to this side, we've got to remove a couple of things. One thing we need to remove is this uh, high current shunt resistor assembly. And it is socketed, so you could just gradually move it out of the sockets. Being careful not to break any of the pins. And then we need to remove the um, looping compensation capacitor. First to remove the knob. 16th inch Allen wrench. Then, then I can remove the screw with a uh, 3 8 inch nut driver. Remove the nut that holds it, and it's got a lock washer behind it, behind the nut. Now, in order to actually remove the capacitor, it has one wire soldered to it. We'll need to unsolder the wire. I've unsoldered the wire. Just gonna bend it back out of the way. And I can remove the uh, looping capacitor. <clears throat> now we can get to both sides of the switch with some little bit of difficulty, but we can get to both sides and remove the they got the screws holding the contact assemblies. And I don't recall seeing this before, but just remember that there is a, a ground lead on one of the screws. a small plate on the outside of the scoot, two screws share. So that loses one set of contacts. Now the other screws are uh, recessed. The stack is a little thinner. I had to uh, find a screwdriver with a thinner blade. Better match the screws. So that's one bottom screw. The other bottom screw. I 
I think I'll try and keep those screws in place because it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to uh, get those screws back in, given that they're kind of underneath the other thicker uh, stack. Now we're going to do the other side, and this is a little trickier. Fortunately, the screws aren't, unless in this case, aren't very tight. Before I proceed with removing the other side of the stack of contacts, I'm going to actually loosen the um, nut. Now it has a 12, this one has a 12 point nut. So if you have the right size 12 point socket, you could use that to loosen it. The replacement switch has a 6 point nut, which may be easier to, um, to put back on. Now, see the goal, the goal is going to be to loosen this other set of contacts and then slide out the mechanical part and slide in the new one, reinstall the contacts. I'm going to twist this slightly. I'm trying not, to, it's one of the reasons that you don't want to undo all the wires uh, is because you know, the, the number of wires and the location and all it's going to be hard to get them all back on so that's why the idea is to replace the switch without unsoldering any wires and I can't move it very much I'd like to I'd like to actually rotate it a little bit to try to get better access to the screws but that's not happening but the top set of screws are loosening pretty well even though I'm attacking them at an angle with the screwdriver. This gives a little better close-up view of the switch with the uh, screws out on the f on the outside side. Notice the bottom section is has phenolic insulators. Be careful not to lose any of those insulators. Make sure they're in place when you reinstall the new mechanism. And here's the other side. It's hard to get to the screws underneath, so that's why I need a new tool. Getting to the screws inside, um, on the inside bottom proved to be extremely difficult, so I got this right angle screwdriver from Harbor Freight. However, the um, straight bit, straight blade bit was too thick to go into the groove on the screws, so I borrowed a bit from this set, which I also got at Harbor Freight, which had a small, thin straight blade bit. And I also create some room, unsoldered this wire, which, which used to go down to there. And I also moved this small, this is a small loop, which I think is some kind of parasitic capacitor. I moved that, uh, actually loosened it with soldering iron and moved it down a little bit to get clearance for the right angle screwdriver. And now I can remove the bottom screws with some difficulty. I now have all the screws loosed, loosened. I left the bottom ones in place because they'd be hard to get back in. And now the frame, you can just pull it out. It looks like I had one one insulator fall out. I'll have to be careful to put it back. So now the the old frame is out. 
I need to replace that insulator. As it comes, the switch is set for one-sided mo motion only. <clears throat> this is ca uh, limited by a piece of phenolic. And what you need to do is carefully route out the phenolic so that the uh, little black uh, actuator can move and let the switch go both directions. Well, I've negotiated the new mechanism in place. Took a little bit of prying with a screwdriver to get the bottom insulators to clear but now it's in place and I just need to redo the screws. In order to help things get aligned I'm going to start with the top set of screws on the outside. That'll help everything else to be in alignment when I try to put it together. Put the other screws in. Yeah, that's that top set. Okay, when I'm putting in the top screws, I forgot that one of the screws um, a little ground lug on it. I thought I was missing a screw for a while. Now the top screw, finish the top screws on the other side. Which I can do with a regular screwdriver. Now I can put the lower side screws in. Pieces have gotten out of alignment a little bit. No bending the wires. Some of the leaves. Leaves are also misaligned. And finally the bottom inside screws, which actually fell out. I was working on the other screws. And here again, I'll use the the uh, ratchet. Although the torque on the ratchet is higher than the torque residual torque on the screws, so you have to use the this little handle or knob to actually turn the screw until you get pretty tight. And the knob. Uh, it's kind of in the way too. Now I'm installing and tightening the nut on the switch with a, this is a 9 16 box wrench. And I make sure it's straight before I tighten it. using the hex nut that came with the replacement switch rather than the 12 point nut. So I don't have a wrench really that fits the 12 point. So and there the leaves are going back and forth. Now to resolder, reconnect the things that I disconnected to create clearance. 
Now I'm going to reinstall, or having soldered the wire back in and raise the little round loop back to its normal position. Soldered the green, thick green wire in. I'm going to reinstall the looping capacitor. The looping capacitor has a little ground lug under it that's hard to get under, around. Put the nut back on and there's a lock washer. Back on the looping capacitor. I can tighten it with a and this is a 3 8 nut driver. Tighten it with a 3 8 nut driver. Then I need to resolder. There's a wire that goes to one stator terminal of the capacitor. And I can reinsert the um, shunt, high, high, high current shunt resistor assembly. The beveled end goes toward the front, of course. And fits into some socket pins on the board.